In this last part of the program, we're going to look at problems that are primarily confined to coal burning plants. These are equipment fires. From your knowledge of fuels and combustion, you know that under certain conditions, coal can ignite by itself. This phenomenon is referred to as spontaneous combustion and is a frequent problem in the coal yard. We'll use this simplified drawing of a coal pile to review how spontaneous combustion occurs. Coal in the coal yard is subjected to the heat of the sun and the heat produced by decaying organic matter in the coal. In some cases, the heat is sufficient to start combustion in a small section of the coal pile. Air pockets in the pile, as well as the air in the surrounding atmosphere, keeps the combustion process going. Coal pile fires are generally slow, smoldering fires that don't produce much in the way of flames. As a rule, coal yard fires do not endanger plant operation. In general, coal pile fires are put out by compacting the coal with bulldozers. Compacting eliminates air from the combustion process, and the fire smothers. If coal pile fires are not extinguished, the fire can be transferred from the pile to the coal bunkers, feeders, and pulverizers. How an operator handles fires in the bunkers, the feeders, or the pulverizer will depend on the severity of the fire and the circumstances and conditions in the plant. Let's look at bunker fires first. Bunker fires can be caused by an existing fire in a coal pile being transferred to the bunker when coal is moved to the plant. Bunkers can also catch fire due to spontaneous combustion. An operator can often detect a bunker fire by the smell of burning coal, or in some cases, by smoke rising out of the burning area of the bunker. A bunker fire does not usually interrupt the operation of a plant. In some cases, an operator may decide to leave the fire alone in hopes of its burning itself out. In most cases, however, the typical procedure for dealing with a bunker fire is to burn the bunker empty. What this means is that the operator uses the coal stored in the burning bunker as rapidly as possible, and that the bunker is emptied of all coal before it is refilled. Usually, as the coal flows through the bunker, the shifting of the coal compacts it and removes air spaces. This removes one of the requirements for combustion and may extinguish the fire. However, when an operator decides to burn the bunker empty, it's done with the understanding that the fire may be transferred from the bunker to the feeders and to the pulverizers. We look at feeder fires next. In most cases, a feeder doesn't catch fire all by itself. Feeder fires usually result from burning coal being transferred to the feeder from the bunker. Symptoms of a feeder fire include smoke coming from the feeder and hot metal surfaces. As with bunker fires, the most common action taken by an operator to handle feeder fires is to increase the flow of coal through the feeder. The idea is to transport the coal to the burners as rapidly as possible. In some cases, increasing the flow rate through the feeder will eliminate air pockets and smother the fire. In other cases, the fire will simply move from the feeder to the pulverizer. Pulverizer fires can be caused in the manner we just described, or they can also result from too high a temperature inside the pulverizer, or from a spark produced by metal-to-metal -metal contact inside the pulverizer. Regardless of how they're caused, pulverizer fires can create significant problems for the operator. A pulverizer is a closed piece of equipment that utilizes the close tolerances between its rollers and the bowl to crush the coal. Excessive heat from a fire in the pulverizer can cause these components to warp or crack. In extreme cases, if the coal in the pulverizer ignites rapidly enough, the pulverizer can explode. As with the other equipment fires we've discussed, the primary method of handling a pulverizer fire is to increase the flow of coal through the pulverizer. This gets the coal out of the pulverizer and to the burners as rapidly as possible. There is another piece of equipment in the plant that sometimes is prone to fires. That's the air preheater. On rare occasions, changes in normal operating conditions, an incomplete boiler purge, or even dead spots in the flue gas flow path through the air preheaters may allow combustibles to accumulate inside. In the event that one of these situations occurs, a fire may result. An operator can generally increase airflow through a burning air preheater and blow the fire out. For the most part, the equipment fires that we've discussed are contained within the equipment and do not normally represent an immediate danger to the operation of the plant. However, like any abnormal condition, an operator must carefully monitor the situation to make sure that it doesn't get worse. Now, just as it is necessary to understand the proper action to take in the event of an equipment fire, it's also necessary to understand 
what not to do. The fires that we've discussed occur inside closed equipment. In many cases, there are access doors on these pieces of equipment that allow maintenance to be performed. If an equipment fire is suspected, under no circumstances should an access door be opened. By leaving access doors closed, you increase the likelihood that the fire will consume all available oxygen and eventually smother itself. Opening an access door has exactly the opposite effect. An immediate supply of oxygen is made available for combustion, which could make the fire worse or even cause an explosion. Another thing you want to avoid is flooding the burning equipment with water. Bunkers, feeders, pulverizers, and air preheaters are all made of heavy metal. If a fire occurs, the temperature of the metal increases. If water is suddenly poured on the metal, it will cause the metal to cool rapidly, and this can create warping and cracking that will actually damage the equipment more than the fire could. In some cases, water can also make the fire worse. Fires in bunkers and coal piles generally occur deep down in the coal. Water has to filter through the chunks of coal to get to the fire. In doing so, the water can cut passageways for air that can actually feed the fire and increase combustion. In all cases, your plant will have specific procedures that you should follow when dealing with equipment fires. Throughout this program on abnormal and emergency conditions, we've looked at problems that happen only on rare occasions. It's important that an operator be prepared to handle these types of situations and have a thorough knowledge of the procedures which apply. The basic rules for dealing with any abnormal or emergency operating conditions are identify the source of the problem, take immediate action to correct the problem, and return the unit to normal operation as quickly as circumstances and procedures will allow. Take some time now to finish reading the material in your text and answer the final set of questions. If you want more information on abnormal or emergency operation, ask your instructor to help you.